Hi everybody, let me show you what we're doing today. So this is my 2016 Mini Cooper John Cooper Works F56 platform. And what I'm doing is installing new brake pads and new rotors on all four corners of the car. So I have EBC yellow stuff pads. These are StopTech slotted and drilled rotors. The rears are just slotted. Um, and that's because of ECS tuning not being great at delivering product. But um, I'm gonna show you how to do it on the other side, walk you through it, and uh, I'll link to all the products down below so you don't have to take notes or anything like that. So here's what the parts look like off the vehicle. This is the front rotor. These are yellow stuff front pads. Those are um, the discs that the pads come with to install them inside the calipers. There's the rear rotor, yellow stuff rear pads, and the anti-rattle clips that also come with them. At the same time, I'm installing these NM braided stainless steel lines. Um, those are optional, not something you have to do, but I'm choosing to do it at the same time. Why not? So I'm gonna remove my spacers. They just are sitting there. Um, so here we're looking at the caliper and the rotors right here. Um, the rotors have a six millimeter screw that puts them in. So six millimeter Allen on your impact should take it right out. They pop right out for me. I bought replacements, they're stainless. Um, so they're here in the bag. You don't necessarily need to. Uh, I didn't have any problems with any of mine. So we're gonna remove this caliper and in order to do that, there are pins that you have to push out. So I just kind of made this. You just need a stiff piece of metal that you can cut. Um, so you just put this in here. So we're gonna pull these pins out of the back. Just like that. Pull this one out of the back. There's like this uh, tensioner that sits here and these pins sit in these slots. So once you get one out, the other one kind of slides out really easily. Now, on the back side of the rotor, there are two 17 millimeter screws. So, or 17 millimeter bolts. We're gonna take those out with a ratchet. If you have one like this with this bend, that'll help you out. Otherwise you can do it with one that doesn't. So, I'm gonna pull this off like that, which will allow us to remove the rotor. You can kind of see here where the 17s sit. I just bolt this caliper in. Um, I'm gonna stick one back in here for a sec just to keep this hanging here. Now, because I'm changing the lines, I'm going to disconnect the lines from the back of this. If you're not changing the lines, don't do this. It's an 11 millimeter. You want one of these flare wrenches like this. Line wrenches. last thing holding this in is this wear sensor, which can lift out. And if yours hasn't been worn down yet, you don't need to replace it. If you don't have a brake light on, you can reuse this. I bought new ones anyway, but I'm gonna reuse them. So here's your caliper. That's what it looks like off. You can see your pads are in there. The pads actually load from the top. So what you wanna do is pull the pads out and up like that, because they have these like centering clips on the back. Just like that. Now, next thing you want to do is clean your caliper. So we're just going to wipe this off with some brake parts cleaner real quick, just to make it so that it's able to be worked on without getting all black. <clears throat> so we're going to install the pads. Now these pads, um, they're all the same. All four of them are the same. There isn't an in or an out, they're, they're just the same. So I'm gonna put one here like this. Put one here. And 
and we're going to clip this one here. And you're probably thinking, well, what about the things on the back? Just bear with me here. So you put two in like that, get it started. So we're gonna grab the other pin and I'm not fully seating these pins in. I'm just kind of putting them here to keep these in line. So we've got one there, we've got one there, okay? Now, this is gonna go like that. We're going to take two of these pads and we're going to peel the adhesive back off of it. And I've just been kind of like sticking them right on my finger like that, going in here and snapping it into place and then doing the same thing on the other one. Okay, so those two are in. Now what I can do is I can use this pad, just grab, grab the rag and we can push the two plungers in and you might shoot brake fluid. Um, obviously because I have the lines off, I was able to push that out. If you didn't have the lines off, you might have to crack one of these bleeders. There's a bleeder here and a bleeder here. It's pressurized, the same system, so opening one should be enough, but anyway. So now we'll do the same thing on this side. Put this in, squeeze the pad into place. Now, we're going to take this we're going to push this down and we're going to install Now those are both in. Now we're just going to tap these back into place. Okay, so those pins are now in. So we're going to set this aside for now and we're going to get the line installed. So this line, this is the factory line, has like a rubber grommet here that you just kind of pull up on and it pops out like that. And then back here, there's an 11 millimeter on the line that you have to loosen up. You don't really have a lot of room on this one because the, uh, the tie rod end link or sway bar end link is right here. Um, but we'll get this loosened up. Once that's loose, this will come off. We don't need this line anymore. Now, we're gonna get our new line, which looks like this. And that side spins, this side does not. So what I actually have to do is put this on the caliper, tighten it up, and then hang the caliper and connect this on the other side. The new line is a 14 millimeter. Tighten that up a little bit more when we're done. And all I'm gonna do is hang this here. You don't wanna bolt this in yet because you still have to put the rotor back on, but the rotor kind of blocks your visibility. So I like to wait to do it. So on the end here that spins, we're gonna put this little washer and we're gonna stick this on here, right on the end of the line, and then the line will screw into it. Now the aftermarket line, the end doesn't stay put like the factory line did, so you actually have to like, you can turn both at the same time. So it actually makes it a little bit easier for tightening up, because you can put a wrench on both but get this started by hand. Okay, so now that's tight. 
and where it's supposed to go. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the rotor and then we're going to we're going to take the caliper off, put it back on to do that. So we're going to loosen this up again. You can leave that hang there. We're going to put our rotor on and now we've got the rotor in place. We're going to line the rotor up and there are the five bolt holes, but there's also the one hole that holds the rotor on, which apparently is as far from this as it can be. We're going to install one of the new bolts. If you do buy these bolts, you only need four. I thought like a Honda, they would have two per corner, but they don't, they only have one. So that's installed. Now we're gonna get this started like that okay the very last thing that we need to do is reconnect our wear sensor so we're gonna put this in here like that so that's in place now the wear sensor goes on the back pad there's only two of them there's one on the driver side front and one on the passenger side rear um, so that's in there if you did need to change it you just follow the harness up and it plugs in up in here. So you just pop this off and there's a plug behind that and you can replace that line if you need to. I didn't need to. So I'm gonna leave it go. Just one of the, uh, one of the perks of changing your brakes before you need to. My front pads are getting pretty low. My backs still had a lot on them. But I wanted to do new rotors and stuff too, so anyway. So now's a good time to kind of clean everything off. So we're gonna wipe all this down, rotate, wipe, rotate. One thing that makes it a little easier, just kind of start one of these. And you can rotate that by hand. There you are. If you get a lot, spray it again. Do another pass. There. Brakes can't be too clean. So you can wipe these off. If there are any spots that you want to take some extra care to clean, you can do that. We're gonna put the second bolt in. So, in the back, we are going to remove the caliper, remove the caliper hanger, remove the rotor, change the rotor, change the pads, put it all back together. So, first thing, six mil on the front, comes off, 14. And a 14. FYI, if your e-brake is on, you're not gonna be able to pull this off. Mine's not, so this comes off. And that'll kind of hang by the cable there. Then this mount, you can see the pads here, so we can pull the pads. My backs were not too bad. And for the mount on this, it is an E14. E is an external Torx, looks like that. bent this, trying to take that bolt out. So you definitely want to keep the top bolt in before you loosen up the bottom.
Okay. Now this one, this side goes on the caliper. This side connects to the line. You have to connect this one first. So we're gonna poke this through here. That's in. The rubber connectors are on. And we're going to insert the line with, connect the line just like the front. You can hold the bottom with a 17. Tighten the line up top. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to push this in. And in order to push this in, you need a tool that can turn it. So I got this from O'Reilly's, it's a rental. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to the one that I think that you should buy. I'm gonna buy one for myself after this because they're, I was actually gonna rent theirs and just not return it and pay for it, but their rental kind of sucks. It's pretty old and crusty, but it'll do the job. So what you do is, this has two pins on it, and there are two slots in here, and you just kind of twist this. Like that. And it goes in. And it's only gonna go in so far, and then it'll kind of continue to spin, but it won't go any further back. And I was just doing it in like short motions because you don't wanna catch the the rubber gasket accidentally. And this is uh, part of the self-tensioning emergency brake from what I understand. All right, so that's been pushed in. Super easy to do if you have the right tool. I had to drive to O'Reilly's for it. All right, so now this, I'm gonna get this reinstalled. These are our e, uh, E14 bolts that I was talking about earlier. Now, we're gonna install pads. So these clips that you took out before, um, they're both the same. There isn't like a top or a bottom. So they just kind of go in like that. And then this one will go in the top like that. The pad with this V with the little notch is the back side. So that's gonna go in here. And then these come with these clips. And you'll see the clips have like little notches on them. So they actually go like this. You kind of hook them and then the, the, the pins, there's pins on the pad that sit in the notches on the front. The back one does not have notches. So same thing. It's probably easier to put these on before you put the pads on. I'm guessing you could. not too hard to do afterwards either. So that's on now. And then this gets put in place. You might have to push back. These are like spring loaded where these bolts go in. Push that in like that. And then we'll take these like that. Now we're gonna bleed the brakes. Uh, so we're using modal brake fluid. This is modal.5.1. 5.1 is compatible with three and four. You cannot put dot five in this system. So we topped off our reservoir. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm using this Motive Products power bleeder. I'm gonna leave myself like a half a quart or a half of a 500. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna screw the top on. So this has um, about a liter and a quarter in it. Got two 500s and then like another 
another 250. So screw this top on. And this is the one that has the, the BMW cap on it. So this is what the BMW cap looks like. So we're gonna pump this a little bit to kind of get the brake fluid through the line. Now that we're getting to the top, I'm going to screw this cap on to the reservoir, like that. And then the pressure you're supposed to run in this is 1.7 bar, which is like around 20, 25 PSI. So we're going to pump this up. You can actually hear the calipers moving. We're going to keep going. Now what I'm going to do is go around and look for leaks. So this looks good. That looks good. This rear looks good. And this rear looks good. So now we're going to start bleeding. So we bleed with the right rear first, then the left rear, then the right front, then the left front. And we're using these uh, Motive bl brake bleeder bottles. See the valve. We're going to open this up. Now normally what you want to do is you want to have this bottle above where your brakes are. So set it up here. That way, if it pulls air, it doesn't pull air back in, it pulls fluid back in. So let's get an 11 millimeter to open this up. Again, I like using one of these line wrenches for this. It just has a better contact area. When we open it up, you see it start flowing. And we're just gonna let it go. Lots and lots of air. And I'm also looking for the fluid to change color um, to get a little bit lighter in color. See, it's kind of like a yellowish color right now. We'll go more of a, like a clear, All right? So now the air seems to be out of the system. We're going to take this and we're going to close it. And we're going to go around and do the other corners. Then I'm going to go do the same thing to the uh, passenger, the driver's side rear. So now we're doing the front. There's one on the front and one on the back over here. Right here where my finger is. So we're going to do the front one first. And we'll do the back one. Then we'll do the front one. Because I don't know the order you're supposed to go in for those. These are still in 11 millimeter. So now we're going to tighten this one back up. See how it kind of color changed to more clear. It's not exactly clear, but it's definitely closer to clear. Like that. And we're going to go back to this side. Because I don't know if I'm supposed to do this side first or not. Let this go. These bottles are nice. I have three of them. We're going to do the driver's side, same way. All right, so we're all done. So now we're just going to put the car back together. We're going to take it for a ride. Here's the finished product with the wheels reinstalled, what the fronts look like, the backs. At this point, I've put about 60 miles on the car. The brakes grab well. Um, they're still bedding in. Uh, the bed-in process for these EBC 
yellow stuff pads is that you're supposed to drive it like normal for 50 to 100 miles. Then once you get through that, you're supposed to do a, um, a series of stops where you go from 80 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour, leaving 300 yards in between those runs. So um, I'm going to run it for a couple more miles and then I'm going to do that process and we'll be good to go. Um, I obviously need to get the wheels cleaned up, but I think that they look great. Um, I really like the way that these Motegi track light wheels show the uh, brake calipers and brake rotors. Um, I just think it kind of puts them on display and I'm happy with the performance so far. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll ride it around for a little bit and then after a... I don't know, say 500 miles or so. Um, I'll probably bleed the brakes one more time just to make sure that I got all the air out of the system and we'll be good to go. So thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already.